Hello there. So what I've decided to talk about today is ethics and morality. Now, I did a long form talk on this with Manuel Post, um, who is awesome. So you should listen to all the conversations I have with Manuel. Uh, we've got a bunch on here. We've got a playlist on the Awakening from the Meaning Crisis Discord YouTube channel. I'll link the playlist here if I can remember. And um, ethics and morality are confusing for people. So I wanted to try to do a shorter form definition. You can engage with the longer form video if you want. Uh, but for now, I'm gonna try to do a shorter form of ethics and morality for those people who wanna grab like my framework and try to use it and work with it. It makes it a little bit easier. Obviously, I'm not gonna resolve ethics and morality for you, right? I'm just trying to give you the framework. So let's jump in. Ethics and morality are two different things. The way I like to conceive of them, the way I think is the easiest to conceive of, the, the most useful, is to say you've got ethics, and that's the, the ethereal or the realm of platonic forms, right? That's the ideal, ideal of your ethics. Uh, and then you've got this idea around morality, which is the implementation. Now, this is kind of important. The reason why it's important, and again, there's a long form video that I did with Manuel on this. So if you want to deep dive, go there. We get into these sorts of things um, a little bit deeper. But the reason why it's important is because as long as I can have some amount of trust uh, or hope or faith, those aren't the same thing, uh, that your ethics and my ethics match, then we can trade. So it's actually really important. We can trade, roughly speaking, if our eth ethics match close enough. Uh, otherwise, we can't trade. Now, if in the trade a mistake is made, that is a mistake of morals, not ethics, which allows you to make a mistake in your implementation of the trade without me having to condemn you as a heretic or like never trade with you again. Right? I can just understand that you made a mistake. That's why a moral error and an ethical error are not the same. And this is important because this is kind of the way we use these terms, whether we realize it or not. A lot of people are, are using this formulation like in their heads without you know really understanding it, but they are. Uh, and so somebody can be immoral about a thing without being unethical overall. Uh, we see this with people uh, You'll condemn somebody as immoral because of maybe their how they deal with the opposite sex, for example. Um, uh, and, but you may still be able to live with them or operate, you know, in a world with them in it. Whereas if someone's unethical, yeah, you get a, you can't do anything with them at all. Like if someone's unethical, that means you could be, you know, you've got to just get rid of them from society, at least from your trade trade network. Right, you just can't deal with somebody who's unethical because you don't know what they're what they're going to do. Uh, whereas an immoral person is probably in a box; it's contained within a box. So it's kind of important that ethics is kind of up here, right? It's this it's this higher ideal form of something, and the morality is in the implementation, in the doing, and in the interaction. And that is a lot easier to see, right? Uh, ethics up here is harder to understand. It's all conceptual, right? Or mostly conceptual, but probably all conceptual. Whereas this morality is something that in an action can be moral or immoral. Um, you, can, you can cast actions into imagination, things that didn't happen yet, but you cast them as actions to figure out whether or not they're immoral. And then unethical is why well, I don't understand that person's ethics, right? Or I understand that person's ethics and they don't match mine and therefore they're unethical. Uh, they're, they're lacking in ethics. So in other words, they don't have a framework grounding them. And therefore you don't know what what moral or actions are gonna take in the moment because there's no there's nothing grounding them, right? They're not connected to this world of forms, this ethical realm of perfection. So that's a real problem. Uh, when you don't conceive of it that way, people get confused, they swap the words around, I swap the words around, it happens, right? Uh, but it gets confusing as to what people are actually meaning, right? How they're conceptualizing these things in the moment. 
Uh, and usually when they're talking about ethics, again, that's that higher, pure, ideal realm. And morality is that realm of implementation and what you actually do in the world. And being able to trade with somebody is really important. Uh, and tr trade just isn't, you know, I, I'm swapping this for that. Trade is also cooperation. I'm going to trade my time, energy, and effort for your time, energy, and effort in the future. Or maybe I'm just going to give you my time, energy, and effort. And, you know, you may feel indebted for that. For example, a lot of people feel guilty when people do things for them. Uh, I'm not going to name anybody that might be making this video or anything. But there are people like that, uh, I assure you. Um, so, yeah, you, you know, you want to reciprocate. And you want to be able to reciprocate. And, and that gets into cooperation versus competition. Another great video that I have that if you haven't watched it, you should definitely check that one out. Um, so yeah, this is kind of important because um, it really gets to the root of what we're doing and how we're doing it when we're using the words. And this channel, this, this uh, distributed cognition channel here where I'm trying to work through the cultural cognitive grammar, right, which is sense making, roughly speaking, that's what I'm after. How people are using words, not necessarily the dictionary definitions, but how people are using them when they're talking about these things versus how they're being interpreted, right? Versus maybe uh, what what you think they're, they're being viewed as. Because those are three different things, right? What we think we're saying, what we're actually saying, and then how it's being heard. Um, and, and the middle one's hard to understand, but it's there. It's definitely there. The zeitgeist is that middle thing, right? It's what's actually out there. And how people are interpreting it is the thing that confuses the zeitgeist, right? Or confuses people like, well, we've got this example over here and that example over there, but they're using the same words. So ethics and morality are all wrapped up in this because we swap those words, as I said earlier. And it's hard to know why someone's doing something. Right. And in the modern world, we don't have a good map uh, or expression for ethics. Right. And we don't even have a good understanding of ethics. Like we don't know what we mean when we say ethical behavior. And that's a problem. Uh, ethics is, and morality is all about virtues and values. Right. You're pointing to the virtues. Uh, you're pointing to them through the values. The values are changing in hierarchy based on what you're trying to do and where you're trying to go and where you're at at the moment. Right. And all of this is terribly important. It's terribly, terribly important. And we have to be able to map these things out for ourselves. Otherwise, we don't know what, what people are up to, what we're up to. We don't know how to cooperate correctly. And that's wrapped up in intimacy. And so that's why I think the intimacy crisis is actually the, the, the thing that leads to the meaning crisis. That's actually the, the, the great problem. This is also why we can't navigate ethics and morality, why we're shrinking everything down into a single identity, because we, we have to, because we don't have the, the sophistication, the mental cognition, the tools and the framework in our heads to work out complex uh, ethical and moral ideas. So we shrink the world down into a, a tiny binary understanding. I have a video on that, binary thinking into a binary understanding. And then when everybody does that and they have different binaries, different binary understandings, we just end up with a lot of fighting. And this leads to bad prediction of the world. I've said this before, bad prediction of the world leads to a problem where you become angry and resentful because there's bad prediction of the world. That's no good. We don't want that. Fair enough. We don't want that. That's terrible. Um, but we have to find a way to resolve it. So that's what's important about ethics and morals. Uh, that's why I think very few people actually have thought it through well enough, right? They may have values that they're not aware of, that they're enacting, uh, and always look for how people act, not what people say. Don't care what you say. Uh, if I want to know what you believe, I'll watch how you act. Uh, that's a paraphrasing from Jordan Peterson. Of course, I was doing that a long time ago, too. Uh, uh, you know, Dr. Peterson is not the only one that, that, that had that pragmatic approach to the world. So... Ethics and morality is a tough thing. There's a lot there. Virtues and values are not easy. It's hard to even get a good list of them on the internet. Uh, the, the source of all knowledge in the world. Tell me about values. Tell me about virtues, right? You get 17 different lists with a very few overlaps. Um, yeah, it's a really big issue and it's something that's super important. And I just wanted to give you the quick outline 
so that maybe you can know how much you don't know about your own moral stance in the world, about your own ethics, and about how complicated values are to work out, and how that leads you and others into binary thinking, into shrinking people down to a single identity. Or maybe it's race, maybe it's ethnicity, maybe it's sexual orientation, right? Maybe it's whether or not you worship the climate god this week, right? Who knows? Uh, but we always shrink people down into these, or lately we've been shrinking people down into these really simple constructions. But I think that's because we don't, we're, we're scared of ethics. We're, we're, we're trying to resolve it. And that's the only way to do it in a, in a complicated world uh, with a lot of complexity that we don't understand and believe that we do, right? Because if you believe you've got a handle on ethics and morality, first of all, I think you're nuts. Uh, but if, if that proves not to be the case, then you got to shrink the world down to something simple. So we start oversimplifying our models. And, and that, I think, explains the current world quite nicely. Right? A lot of people need simple models because they can't deal with ethics and morality. So hopefully you found this video helpful. Uh, either way, please leave a comment, do a like, a subscribe, whatever you got to do. Tell your friends, tell your family, uh, sign up your, uh, your pets for my YouTube channel. Uh, I need 45 more subs. I need to get 300 so that I can get on Odyssey like with auto load, which would save me from the pain of trying to manually upload all of my videos from this YouTube channel onto their crazy service. Uh, so yeah, just trying to grow the channel and uh, help more people out, help them work through, you know, cultural cognitive grammar issues, uh, help people to sense make, you know, get, get some of these issues better thought about in the world, right? Give people access to models. I got models on here. Uh, Got to do some more slides. We'll do that next time. Um, and, you know, it, it's great that I get to do this. Uh, I, I, I like doing this. Uh, I don't do all the work. Obviously, I couldn't do all the work. I'm not, I'm not good enough. Uh, certainly, uh, video editing drives me crazy. Uh, building thumbnails is about all I can handle nowadays other than just doing the videos. So I'm grateful that I have people helping me and I have a lot of help on the Discord. Uh, on Clubhouse, places like that, where I get fed information. I get to see the zeitgeist, right? I get to talk to people and I understand where frustrations are coming from, hopefully, at least to some degree. And that informs all of this. Comments help, uh, whether they're on Clubhouse or, or on Discord or in email or in the comment section, all of it helps. So I really appreciate that. And I wanna thank you as always uh, for the thing that I'm most grateful for, which is your time and attention.